Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, a special edition Awesome Cast slash panel ride slash something else entirely. Not so much the tech tonight, but we kind of uh, ventured on a discussion a few weeks ago on the show that got a little bit of response. We were talking about Comic Cons, but in, and and we're gonna get in a little bit further discussion about like kind of what is the state of Comic Cons, what's going on out there, and, and, and see how those are. We're very agreeable to Wizard World, and apparently that was a problem somewhere along the way. Mike Sorg at <laughs> Sorgatron on the Twitter with an eclectic pa- uh, panel tonight. We got some uh, feedback from our good friends, of course, uh, Dan Greenwald of the Comic Book Pit. That couldn't make our scheduling. Everybody was on divergent uh, schedules, unfortunately. But we do have a, a, a feedback from him. But with me, um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, the guy the guy that... Ins- it, it's your fault this is happening, Diggy. Uh, John DeGore, at Diggy on the Twitter. <laughs> we'll get into why I'm that is. I'm happy about it. I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, thank you. It's been so long ha- ha- since having you on. Of course, we had you on before talking about AIGA and the like in here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I've been pretty busy with grad school, but uh, I always make time to talk about comics. So I'm happy to give you my opinion on why I don't think Wizard World's necessarily the best thing ever. <laughs> All right. And also with us, I had to at least have somebody who was a professional uh, comic book uh, 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 podcaster. And uh, that guy is also the uh, uh, co-founder of Wrestling Mayhem Show, our flagship here at Sorgatron Media. Will Rutherford, yeah, that's his real name, PanelRiot.com is his fantastic show. I, I, I guess I am a professional. You get, you get past 60 episodes and you're considered a professional. Um, and to that end, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this week's edition of panel riot Wait, this man. week we are talking about conventions and it's a podcast within a podcast because actually this is this week's edition of awesome cast <laughs> yes it is is stan in the corner stan is in the corner um he is incredibly camera shy and too stoned to uh to actually appear on camera it's like a vampire thing i don't really understand it but he's he's out it happens. It happens to all of us. You should see me about the third hour into the wrestling podcast. But anyways, uh, so so we're having, like like I said, we're having a discussion. Uh, our our boy Chilla was as he does. He went to Philadelphia for Wizard World in particular, and he's been around to a few of them. I think he's been to New York Comic Con. He's been to C two E two. So it's not like he's like just does Wizard World or anything like that. He's been around to a few of the cons, and of course uh, the ones here in Pittsburgh as well. And if you want to see uh, a little bit of what exactly he has going on, you can go over to chillatech.net is his uh his blog it's kind of new newer blog and he's got some p- images and some write-ups about taking pictures at uh yeah and he's a bit of a pho- photog as well uh so you can check out some of his stuff and that initial conversation back on awesome cast 302 um and i think we just did 304 this week and who knows when you're going to listen to this because we don't know when we're releasing it just yet uh but you can go back and find that over to, like i said chillatech.net but we were discussing it and i know i am a big fan that wizard world has come to pittsburgh because i thought the con scene you know after going to things like new york comic con and baltimore comic con i thought it was kind of sad in comparison and i thought that was a general good thing and i was glad to see it uh uh diggy you had a different opinion and i want to go right into that and 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 what you know I know there's like a, a bit of an air against Wizard World. Um, I think I've heard the term of the, the, the McDonald's of Comic Cons or something along the lines. Can you explain uh, kind of your take that that, that you were uh, uh, hitting us up with after you listened to the show? Yeah, um, you know, I went to Wizard World back probably like 10 years ago and in the early aughts in uh, Philadelphia. And I'll admit, when I went then, it was great. I went to the one in Pittsburgh. And it just was not, I don't know, it's, it wasn't a comic con to me. Like, there weren't a lot of comic vendors there anymore. It was more like a pop culture con, mm-hmm. which is something that I think we already have going on pretty well with the Still City Con. And so when I saw that, the you know, a Wizard World Con was coming here, I did get pretty excited. And I was like, yeah, I can finally find some back, you know, some long boxes and some cheap bins to, like, go through 
and find some stuff. And when it got here, I was just really underwhelmed. It's to me like going to a comic con, you know, a traditional comic con is not just about celebrities, it's about artists, artist alley, like with some good comic book creators and like just tables of long boxes for you to kind of troll through and find some stuff you were looking for, some cheaper items. Maybe you're trying to fill in a run of something small, like a really weird series. And when those things are gone, you don't really get the opportunity to do that. If you wanted to go put together a Spider-Man 2099 run, you're not going to be able to do that at the current Wizard World. Um, I have no idea how Philly is now because I haven't been there. And like I said, since in like 10 years, but if it's gone the route of the one here, then it's pretty disappointing because it's harder to find that experience Mm -hmm. because still city con is more of a pop culture, like toy con. And they have a couple of guys with long boxes, but not that many. So when they made that like Pittsburgh comic con to Pittsburgh wizard con, like all those vendors that were previously there putting out their long boxes were just gone because they can no longer afford essentially to get the tables. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, it went, uh, so, Will, you've been to a few cons as well. I know you've been up for New York Comic Con with us um, mm-hmm. um, uh, a few years ago. Uh, you've seen some of the cons around the area and such. Uh, wh- what was your opinion? Like, what, what kind of experience are you looking for when you uh, go out to one of these cons? Well, uh, I guess what I'm looking for is kind of somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm When I go to a con i'm interested in you know sitting in on panels and you know hearing a lot of uh, information and learning a lot but i'm also interested in the the vendor portion as well i i also want to see the long boxes and the and the merchandise and and everything like that so i guess i'm looking for a for a balance now uh up until i guess relatively recently in pittsburgh that's mainly what it was it was just the big floor and you know there was all the vendors with the long boxes and everything like that um, I actually, I haven't been to the, any of the cons in Pittsburgh since wizard has come in. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm about to get a huge culture shock other side of the coin because in September I'm going to dragon con, which is mainly a pop culture con. So, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm open to the different experiences, but like, if you say that you're a comic con, you should have some comics, probably. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And, and that's been kind of the discussion around San Diego Comic-Con as well. Because, I mean, uh, it, it the movies come in. You know, the Hollywood is there. How many shows are unveiled and have their, their, their uh, you know, Q&As and everything. And everybody's, you know, piling into those rooms to see the stars and everything like that. And not necessarily shows related to comic books you know stuff like supernatural which i guess is kind of reverted back and i'm sure there's a comic book element as well but again it's a geeky it's kind of encompassed all geekiness on that level right Mm -hmm. so yeah like i don't mind when it it brings in all these other like sci-fi and stuff like that i have no issue with it like i said like when i went to philly you know the philly wizard great because they they had a really good balance of that they had a lot of publishers there. They had tons of long boxes. And then they had some, like, you know, top. I think this was when Heroes was big, like right when Heroes came out. So they had, like, you know, Hayden, whatever the hell her last name is. I can't say Paintary. H- Hayden Pantera? I um, think? Yeah, from the cheerleader. Pantera. Yeah. I'm like, she Pantera. was there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one year I went, they had like Stone Cold was there. So it's like, I like the mixture of these things. I just don't like it when those smaller vendors get pushed out and there's not a lot of good artists either. Like I like to go to a con and see my favorite creators, like the guy who put out the book. I love mm-hmm. um, like a, like a David Mack, you know, Brian, Michael Bendis, or now I feel like since they've kind of shifted in that, I'm not going to get to see that. I'm really interested in seeing um, that are working currently like on Marvel books, unless I go to a much bigger con where they're going to have that. Like at the smaller cons, they've kind of pushed that out in favor of more, pop culture stuff and so i feel like i'm missing out a little bit in the smaller market well and i think that's something that now well first let me uh, i'll address that in a moment but i kind of want to give my perspective as well like what i look for in a con like i'm not i was a really big comic book collector until like probably about 10 12 13 years ago when i really got i got priced out in, in in school 
uh, from reading them. And recently, over the last few years, partially thanks to to Will here, uh, and thanks to my local library, and thanks to other things like Marvel Unlimited and, and these these great online services, really, really dive back into comics. I'm kind of in catch up mode and everything. And I'm not, I, I, I'm haven't really been too much of a uh, artist follower or anything like that. So I'm not on that level. I'm more into them. They, when we first went to New York Comic Con, I was just up for the experience right and i think what was the first year we went was like maybe like 2011 perhaps that's that sounds about right i think that's that's the year you went and even even from then to when we went like two or three years later like it had expanded about threefold in that building um Mm. you know it, it 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 is growing and again it is of course amassing that pop culture everything a little bit um like you know what what was some of the stuff we went when we went up to do uh, we were doing press the one year and we ended up talking to the guys behind voltron the guys behind uh uh, the south park game including like the the head of like you know south park uh uh, creator studio and stuff like that so again kind of it was kind of become a multimedia uh thing you know all kind of glommed onto this but it's it's the same audience for the most part i was freaking out over the he-man stuff they were showing off to be honest um (laughs) Which is more a toy and cartoon kind of thing. Uh, so, so my view of a comic con again, not from that like super comic book, you know, uh, follower. You know, I'm more exploratory today than I used to be. Uh, my big explorations was picking up a couple of Wildcats comics from Image. You know, uh, like that was <laughs> that was risky back in the day for me. Uh, but I also didn't have a lot of access to good comic book stores. So, um, and we didn't have the internet <laughs> as prevalent these, as as back then. Um, so, so my take on that versus looking at what we did have in Pittsburgh, like we did have the Steel City Con, and I remember when the Steel City Con, I was actually there for a wrestling show. Actually, I was there before then when ICP was there, uh, or not ICP themselves, but like they showed up with a booth and stuff and had a big kind of mini gathering kind of thing. Uh, you know, and it was the t- and the Steel City Con kind of went through a rebranding, and they have it three times a year, and 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 they're bringing in all these. All these names, like your Adam West and, and some of the old wrestlers, and and and, and you know this person that played this thing in the Star Wars movie uh, uh, fifteen years ago, right? Uh, or Chewbacca, because Chewbacca had all these things. So it's become more of a geekathon thing. But when I saw Pittsburgh Comic Con, yeah, it had the long boxes and it had everything else. But what it didn't have, I thought, were the people, right? And and I think I stated on on the show. It felt like there was a problem. And again, my comparison points are the New York City cons of the last few years and the Baltimore Comic Cons. But when I can walk into like a back the back of a room where Stan Lee is in and actually get to like attend his conference, like it feels like something's wrong there. Right. It wasn't attracting the people that should be excited about this in the city. And, you know, they're in the city, but I feel like that people didn't know about it. When they got moved downtown and yeah, you got the David Duchovny and the Will Shatner, which I, I think is cool. Um, but then the people showed up, too. Right. Uh, You know, it needed to be a Pittsburgh Comic Con and not the Monroeville Comic Con. Um, And, and, you know, much like when you go see that Baltimore Comic Con right downtown, New York, right. I guess that's downtown. I know it's kind of all downtown, isn't it? Um, You know, you know, something really, really kind of that represented Pittsburgh and represented geeks in Pittsburgh. And that's where I thought it, it, it brought that in. And maybe it somebody couldn't do it without the support of something that's like basically a chain like wizard world. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great that they've, okay. So like the, the Pittsburgh comic con, I mean, the first one I went to is probably in 95 or 90. Yeah. So 95 or 94. So I've been going to these cons for like ever. And back in the nineties, I mean, there were no issues. I mean, before (laughs) we even hit this, you know, what we have now, like this geek renaissance culture where everybody's becoming more geeky. Like in the nineties, they had no, no problems through the early two thousands with attendance at the con, but I think they just started to mismanage it. And I'm not going to go get into that. Cause if you want to, you can read a lot of articles about the people that owned it beforehand. Mm-hmm. Um, and the crazy family history they have. <laughs> um, and it's not really surprising, but it just became, a, it's not easy to manage, especially in this changing economy as well. So you could also put that in there. I mean, our economy's changed. The internet's grown. Things are becoming hard for them. So I think that the wizard stepped in. I Like I said, I was really excited because the wizard cons I'd been to before were great, but now it's much more pop culture oriented, mm-hmm. which I'm not against. Hey, I got my you know Will Shatner autograph 
<laughs> you know, I paid the, the cash and got to go see uh, Kirk, but something that can kind of like fill in that gap. And maybe the guy from uh, New Dimension is doing that with some of the cons he's been putting on, which unfortunately I haven't had the chance to get to one of them yet because they're on a weekend where I'm like every year where I'm usually out of town, which is, uh, <laughs> was it the Three Rivers con just yeah. happened not that long oh, yeah. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't get the chance to see it. And he's had some like mini ones as well. Like I think at like, uh, the Pittsburgh Mills new dimension. And then he just like has them when I'm out of town. So I can't go and check it out. Uh, but like, yeah, you're right. It's, it's a great way. It's bringing in big names. I'm just a little sad that I don't have the long boxes to kind of troll through because, you know, I think still city con has done a great job at kind of feeding some of that pop culture need as well. I mean, I have almost the entire cast of next generation signed, signed uh con first contact poster nice. all i'm missing is you know sir patrick stewart and i might get That's will awesome. wheaton to sign even though he wasn't in the movie he wasn't in the movie <laughs> i know but like i feel like i need to have will wheaton <laughs> sign it um so i think these things feel like for like an old school fanboy like me like some of the the, the i guess the nice the the parts that i like about it are just sliding away to kind of feed this big you know, money machine of let's get all of geek culture. Mm -hmm. And I just shed like a tiny little geek tear <laughs> for one out for all my so, long boxes. Cause it's just gone. Like it's yeah. a part of the culture that is slowly fading away in a lot of areas. And it's a fun part of the culture. Now I'm excited. Like where you said there's still dragon card. I heard is mm -hmm. a great con. And I kind of, and emeralds uh, like emerald city. I heard is pretty great. And uh heroes con, I think just was this weekend in North Carolina. I hear like a lot of those are kind of where at what San Diego used to be when it was still like a comic con mm. before it got taken over by like mass media. And I have a buddy who just went to San Diego con like probably six years ago, like right when it pretty much that's, it had already been taken over by media at that point. And he has like, he's a hardcore collector. I mean, he has, holy crap. Like I think he has over 30 long boxes now. And I could be selling him short. He has like a whole basement of comics. And he's just like, yeah, I didn't buy really anything there because it's just like you have to wait in line to get everywhere. And you you get on the floor, like it's just publishers and people pitching products and there's no long boxes. Right. But right. that's expected for San Diego at this point. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you yeah, think that it was... Sorry. No. <laughs> do you think it was, it was San Diego that started all this? They're the... Since uh, since Marvel came in and they started doing these huge you know film announcements and it became this place to uh, announce this certain genre of film. Um, do you think it was San Diego that started all this? Um, I think you know maybe the Marvel movies being so successful is kind of what pushed it this way. I think before Marvel was even big though, they were already doing some pretty big media announcements at Comic Con. It's probably only gotten worse since then. But I think each time Iron Man came out, because that's when I think my friend went, like he went like immediately after he got married, which was, I think, in 2007 and 2008. Um, and it was already like that. Like it had already pretty much been become a media center thing because they were already pushing like any type of sci-fi movie and stuff like that. So but I think Marvel's success is definitely fed into it because, you know, um, Let's see, I was like, this is probably like maybe Red Avengers came out. I was walking, I have like a shit ton of comic book t-shirts. Like I'm wearing one now. Um, and, you know, it used to be like a, nobody ever, I never got beat up or made fun of it for even going to high school in like the 90s. But no one ever paid attention to it. And, you know, I'm walking down the street. I think I was visiting Chicago and some like bro, like, you know, early, probably like junior in college like looked at me like a guy who was like a jock style dude is like dude and i had a wolverine shirt he's like it's a fucking awesome shirt so now i have all these people outside of my grow what i grew up you know grew up having like you know jocks geeky and nerds people like all these jock type people are like yo dude that's an awesome shirt like when i wear i have like an old jane silent bob strikes back t-shirt and if I wear that out, like everybody, which I'm still surprised because that's Kevin Smith and Smith, but it's like, that's kind of like a certain era. And I'm surprised people even noticed that. But a lot of times if I wear a comic book shirt now, like I get a lot of compliments like from people I would 
never expected to get a compliment from 15 years ago. So my mind just like, I was just sitting here. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like <laughs> it, the world has changed. Like teenage me would have no, no, I mean, I would be cool with like, I'm obviously cool with it, but it's just like, such a true culture from when I, you know, I was younger and I was really into it. Like I've been collecting comic books since the early nineties. So it's, it's awesome. Like I'm not one of those people who are complaining about the growth and outreach because anytime someone new gets into comics, I don't care if it's from the movies, like there's awesome books and that leads to more people getting into it. And that mm. leads to even people are like able to go out and put indie books out a lot easier. Now there's a lot of great web comics out there. So any way people can get into comic books, I'm, I'm great with, it's just that sad loss of some of the old school con like experience that, like me now i have to travel further somewhere else to go experience it it's not gone yet but it's definitely not at the same level it used to be because wizard world used to be one of those places like they had a shit ton of good comic vendors there and now i don't know like that's what i would like to see what uh chilla thinks because i know he goes to philly every year yeah yeah and, and, like and maybe say, uh, he... ask him to send an update on how if they still have like the floor with a lot of books out there we'll make sure he has a good uh uh comment on here uh, uh afterwards so maybe as a statement for this but i i think i think like the problem that you're seeing is is the good that the geeks want right um well you may have I, I, well you may have also uh, listened to the same interview i did i think it was cm punk on the nerdist because it's uh yeah. it was it was he was still in wwe at the time and i know he was um he was uh, uh starting to he was writing like a forward i think for uh, avengers x-men and 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 of course he's been involved with a couple writing gigs uh as far as uh comic books go as well and um he was talking about i was like listen you know this, this is like like comic books have become art and it's become the mass thing. And again, I think it's a good statement. I don't care where they came from as long as they're getting into comic books. Um, we see the same thing when we do watch wrestling. Cause like total divas is like a really horrible, uh, uh reality show, but <laughs> women are getting into pro wrestling and it's like, well, if that's a door for them to enter, you know, we're glad to have you, you know? Um, so I think, I think in the long run, like this is a, you know, wizard's going to grow because if it didn't grow, it's going to go away. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and it's kind of brought because I, I follow I, I started following the feed after Pittsburgh last year. I noticed it is the same looking con, it seems, from from place to place. <laughs> and as I get a, a, a message in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com from our boy Wheels, he says he's looking at his 94 Ultra Fleer X-Men <laughs> cards right now to show you where he's at in his geekdom. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Oh, I think we all had a couple of those at least. But um, anyways, nope. the, what's that? No? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, no. I still have a set of, I think, 93 and Marvel Universe cards, <laughs> like, in the next room. I have the... Uh, so the... I can... They're, yeah, they're the ones that, like, you put nine together and they made a big picture. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. And then you glue them to a piece of paper. Nope, nope, nope. But, but uh, you know, this is kind of no, a symptom no. of that. This is a symptom of that. But I think there's a lot of room for others to slide in. Like, I think still CityCon, like, has its place. Like, next to Wizard World, that's a different experience. Obviously, they're, they're more toy aiming directly at that that pop culture uh, people we can get to sign autographs to bring people in the door kind of, kind of uh, experience. And that's fine. And that's fine, you know. Uh, but then you mentioned, of course, uh, you know, there are things like the Pittsburgh Indie Comic Expo. There's another one that's around PIX 2016, which is, uh, is this past already? Actually, this was back on April 2nd. And yeah. Three Rivers Con, as you mentioned, there are those experiences. And we're just talking about Pittsburgh. Like, this, this is going to be different from town to town. We, and I think in the long run, if you look from city to city, like, like for the size of what Pittsburgh is, we are very lucky to have a community uh, of comic book people like this, uh, independence and, 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 and otherwise that we do have options. Like there's a three rivers comic con, there's a picks. And then we also have the big time wizard world down there at the convention center. We get to actually go to a nice convention center and, 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 and have this, this other experience. Um, I'm a big fan of that, uh, myself and, and, and kind of that growth of that. I want to get to, Dan Greenwald's uh, comments, he, he he sent us a couple over. Of course, he's a comic book pit. Check out the comic book pit on uh, iTunes and wherever else fine podcasts are sold. And uh, and definitely check out Long Time. Again, comes from 
the creator perspective as well as a fan. When I first went to Pittsburgh Comic Con, I went along with him. I was like, hey, let's get some interviews. Introduce me to your culture. And I got to meet a lot of the guys and and, and girls involved and stuff around here and and kind of see, kind of get an air of what that was. And there is a very strong culture around that. Um, so he says he, he's got, of course, very, uh, opinions because he's, uh, able to see it from the point of view of a fan, a creator and a member of the press, most recently being in the front lines working for the convention. Uh, it's hard to say if there is one definitive thing that makes a convention good, whether it's a mega con like uh, wizard world. And I think that's a classification. Like it, it is a mega con. It is trying to be at least on a level it can in Pittsburgh, like a New York city, uh, a, a C2E2 and a San Diego, right? So I mean that's that's their agenda right there, or he says, or a small regional con like the new uh, Three Rivers Comic Con. In his opinion, uh, it's almost hard not to have a good time at any of these comic book conventions. I mean, these shows are basically extensions of our shared childhood. And I have to admit, I love reliving my younger days through comics and pop culture. I can't really think of one show where I left and thought, well, that was a waste of my time and or money. I guess the common <laughs> denominator is uh, the person themselves. Whether it's a fanboy looking for back issues, Diggy. That's you, right? And uh, up and coming. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> uh, and up and coming artists uh, trying to pitch their comic. The cosplayer who uh, spent weeks on their costume, the blogger covering the show, or the volunteer working the door. I think it depends on both. I think it depends both on your attitude and what you specifically are looking for, looking to get out of the show. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of the case because that was that was one thing I noticed. There was one of the. Was it maybe Comic Con the movie? No, wait, that's the Mark Hamill one. But there was, what was the main like Comic Con like documentary that came out a, a, a couple years ago? Um, but they were following cosplayers, and then they were following collectors, and they were very much like, and I think it was it was specifically they were doing San, San Diego Comic Con, and they oh, it was it was called Chronicon. Chronicon. It was, uh, it, was it was Doug Benson. And uh, it was Chronicon episode 420, New Dope. I think that's and, a different. Uh, I think are you sure? <laughs> no, is that is that different? I think that's no, different. I, I think that I think yes, but a little different. I there, there was <laughs> yes, but also also no, you're, no, you're you're thinking of it's uh, it's Morgan Spurlock did it, and it's right. Comic Con of Fans Hope. I'm pretty sure. Right, right. You're right. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Um, worth watching if you haven't. I know it, it, I caught it on Netflix uh, shortly after it came out. I'm sure it's on something Hulu, something today. Um, look it up. Definitely watch that if you're you're curious about it. If you you've never been to San Diego Comic Con, um, but but it, that is like my mission is you know typically I'm covering the event or I have a booth that you know I, I've had at Steel City Comic Con and Pittsburgh Comic Con trying to sell something that's not comic books right and trying to tap into that culture kind of sideways from whatever I have to sell like, you know usually around pro wrestling right and say hey guys there's this over here and there's a lot of cross section there um, that's obviously grown up a lot with that with something like these mega cons so you have a lot of people doing that you have Scarehouse there hanging out saying hey guys. You probably like you guys like haunted houses. Let's go check us out in October, right? Um, so, and 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 basically, like, like Chilla, I think mostly goes to see the experience, take pictures of the cosplayers, and just hang out around geeks. You know what I mean? Um, or you know, I, I know if I, I I have a mission, I do have a mission at every Comic Con. Um, I've done this since I think the first time. Uh, well, we went in New York City. Uh, Comic Con mm -hmm. all those years ago, and uh, that's the, that's the year where I found now a good friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Mike Kingston, with the Headlock comic book, um, which was a really good connection there. Uh, it, but I I always have a mission to purchase at least one thing from an artist I've never heard of before, mm -hmm. uh, independent ar artists typically. Um, but that's that's kind of it, and everything else is just kind of gravy on top of that, and just just going seeing the experience. And whatever that the case may be, especially these mega cons. So, and I don't come with a lot of money in my pocket just to, just because you know <laughs> I will buy everything that I freaking can when I go to those things. So, um, and that's kind of my my kind of angle on it. Uh, will, what's your typical kind of aim when you go to something like those? Um, generally, what I'll do is I'll go and um, you know walk the floor. Just see everything that there is to see, what booths there are, because um, you know usually I, I I treat it like gambling. I go in, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars, and I don't want to spend it too soon, and then see something a few booths down and be furious with myself. You know what I mean? So I like to see everything that they have to offer, and um, 
and just just kind of make the rounds at the bigger ones like at new york comic-con i love to take in the, the just the spectacle the mass of humanity and uh the cosplay is always incredible to see i try to take a couple of pictures uh and i always hold back a few dollars for the artist alley as well because like you said you want to buy something from an artist that you've never heard of but their art looks cool you go you strike up a conversation get to know them and uh, uh buy something and um that, that that usually works for me now the cons that i've gone to haven't had um very big panels i know uh dragon con is known more for its panels than anything else i'm hoping to catch a few uh live podcast recordings Ooh. um so uh and yeah that's 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 my the people i'm going with the dragon are um heavy cosplayers so i know i'm going to be hanging out with them a lot and um you know, just kind of seeing the cosplay scene. There's the uh, cosplay parade as well. I think it just started raining very furiously here. <laughs> Sorry if uh, if you lose me. That's okay. Um, but uh, but yeah, mainly um, I think Dragon is going to be cosplay and uh, panels, mainly because again I will have X amount of dollars to spend, mm -hmm. and I have to be careful careful with where I spend it. Mm -hmm. Plus that overpriced concession. Food. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I want to go to drag. I've heard so much good, make so many good things about it. It's one of the cons I want to get to. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of lucked into it because I had a couple of friends that go every year. So they already had an arrangement for hotels and everything like that. So they had an extra slot and I just kind of, I've been uh, paying off everything like, segment by segment like paying for the hotel rooms and paying for the airplane and uh paying for the for the costume and the props and stuff and so that's kind of like me i have my big vacation that i do here every year in the in the summer uh the gathering of the juggalos and i uh, have the hotel room because that's the hard part getting the mm -hmm. ticket is easy <laughs> and i haven't gone that yet but uh i'll have to cross my fingers maybe i'll get a press pass or something so uh but uh no nah, a diggy let's let's check out with you like you know you talked about the long boxes and everything but you know, like generally like is, is that your goal or or is there more of the experience that you really kind of um, target looking at these things and it can be different from con to con too I, yeah i think that's really it for me i think it, the difference in con to con um it depends on like who's gonna be at that con um, it depends on how much money I have in my pocket. Uh, currently I'll go through and see like, who are the guests? Like still city con is like put a giant dent in my wallet, uh, because of all they've got and the like, they're not wizard level quality guests, but they still get a really good quality guest. Like, you know, they're def they may not be a stars, but they're definitely B stars. Like I said, half, almost the whole main cast, the next generation, um, and the majority of the living cast of the original show, minus Shatner, who came for Wizard World anyways. So recently I've been like getting movie posters and things to get signed by people like that. That's been a big thing. Uh, I am slowly trying to put together an amazing Spider-Man run. So I may go to in and check out what Spider-Man books they have. If I'm looking at something in particular and see some prices, if there's something in my price range. I'll snag it like I recently at Wizard Con. I did find like this one dude had like a bunch of like pop vinyls, toys, and then like like three, like probably like three books long of like just like some older comic books. And I got the first uh, first appearance of the Hobgoblin in there. So it's an aim to get a book that I'm really looking for um, and see what the prices are and try and get it. And then probably go find some like weird weird stuff like i like it still sit on there's usually like that guy with like two tables of like old trading cards so i'll buy a couple packs and then i'll just send them to random people like they won't <laughs> know they're getting i'll just be like i need your address they're like why what are you doing and i'm like don't fucking worry about it <laughs> and then they'll get you know some back to the future two cards or I love stickers it. from like 1988 i love uh, the guy i do the same thing <laughs> Yeah, I love, like, I I love mailing like Rambo stuff. cards. That's awesome. Yeah, I like finding some weird stuff to uh, to get. Um, some stuff that people might not necessarily find enjoyment at. Like, I think at this Still City Con, I got a in the card Rick Hunter Matchbox figure, which I accidentally dropped and bent, but I only spent fifteen dollars. Um, 
Yeah, it's it, like you said, it really depends on the con. Like I think after I've been in grad school for a while, so I haven't been like really trying to like get into my collection and further it. And I'm also trying to like figure out how much of it I want to keep, how much of it do I kind of want to get rid of? Cause I'm, I probably got like around like 20 long boxes right now and I don't need all these books, but I definitely want to keep some of them that I have like either a nostalgic value to it or some of them are actually worth money. And then maybe go in and put some smaller weird book collections together, like a generation X. I wouldn't mind having that run of books or weird nineties books that I have some weird nostalgia for. Awesome. Awesome. He's, he's kind of, yeah, he's the more straight up comic book fan, I think, than, 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 than maybe us that are looking for the wide experience. So, uh, <laughs> but that's awesome. That's, uh, that's completely awesome. So there's a lot of options and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, we kind of put the question out, you know, like, Hey, what, what do you look for the cons? What's your mission on cons? What do you think about the state of, of those versus uh, a, a wizard world or something like that? Uh, and, uh, and let us know on comments list if you're finding this video on YouTube or Facebook or uh, on Twitter at AwesomeCast. And of course, if you think any of us are individually right or wrong, I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter. That over there is DJ Lunchbox, or more appropriately, you should probably direct things at his at Panel Riot Twitter, right? That's correct. Yes, Intern Stan is watching it 24 <laughs> 7. Yes, he is. And also, Intern <laughs> Stan on the Twitter uh, as well. And, uh, yeah. and, and it's, it's probably the one, of the, it's one of my top three. I'm not picking a favorite, uh, favorite, um, <laughs> um, um, uh, one person show, one man shows as far as the podcast goes, because it's, it's mostly just you talking about comic books for like 45 yes. minutes every I, I try to get uh, i try to get a, a guest or an interview on uh, every now and then but um yeah more often than not i just read some comics and then talk about them Jeez, we are way 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 overdue talking about transformers comics because holy crap i did not think i could enjoy transformers comics this much dare i say <laughs> maybe more than the 1986 animated film I didn't think this was possible. Absolutely not. High praise. High, high praise. And I own that on three different, I own three different copies of that movie. So, and I still need to get the Blu-ray. Uh, Diggy, is that Diggy on the Twitter? You can talk to him. That's you can, true. Sounds like, uh, sounds like he has some stuff he's looking for. So, uh, if you uh, want to get at him and get some trading on at Diggy on the Twitter is right. Yeah, that's where you can find me. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for instigating this uh, 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 kind of side episode here. Uh, you can, of course, check out. We talk a little more tech and awesome things and geeky things, but mostly more more tech over on AwesomeCast, AwesomeCast.net for the main show. Subscribe to the show, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Facebook. Uh, we're live here from time to time and uh, on all of those. And, of course, every Tuesday about you know, we'll say 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, so thank you to our my awesome Comic-Con panel. Thank you to Dan Greenwald for uh, sending in some comments as well. Thank you to our uh, live audience that was uh, hanging out with us on the live stream. Wheels, I know you're always there. You're the MVP hanging with your 94 Ultra Fleer X-Men cards over there. And everybody else has a couple other names in there as well. Um, but they're fake because that's how the chat room works. Uh, so, but thank you very much. You have been our awesome, awesome audience. Have an awesome Comic Con, wherever that may be. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.